in the middle of seeing all of this Kyle Rittenhouse conversation, I think it's very important that we don't lose sight on the Ahmaud Arbery uh, case. And I say Ahmaud Arbery case, not the Ahmaud Arbery trial, because Ahmaud Arbery is not on trial. Ahmaud Arbery's dead. Ahmaud Arbery was killed by the McMichaels father and son tandem and the other guy that was there with them. And in that, um, my thoughts on it are a bit of a mixed bag. I can see some similarities between a lot of different cases, but as we all know, each case has its own set of facts, what happened, what didn't happen. The one constant between these two high profile cases has been a massive amount of misinformation that's been put out there. Like massive, you know? Oh, he had on, he was stealing stuff from a construction site, which is not true. The owner of the property, English, said nothing was stolen. Security, you know, cameras were there because it's a construction site. How many of us as younger people or if you have an interest in something are in the construction sites? You play in them, you hang out, you walk through them. It's a shortcut to get to another place. That in and of itself does not determine criminality. So it takes me in a different place because I understand the importance of property rights. But if the owner of a place says, yo, it's a construction site, people rolled through, we put up cameras, nothing was ever stolen. The amount of people that are still, to make their agenda come off smooth, that are still saying like, yo, he might've been there in there stealing something. It's safe to say that the owner would know more. So I think that's one of the, the biggest myths that I've seen in this case. One of the, the other uh, facts that has kind of been like debunked is like this argument that somehow the McMichaels were able to effect a citizen's arrest. And I don't think people really know what that shit means. I think that people just hear these terms on television or in movies, a citizen's arrest. Now, do you have a good Samaritan clause where if there's an imminent threat to life or danger, you can intervene? Absolutely. But that doesn't mean, hey, somebody in the neighborhood there's been burglaries around the area, so we're going to chase this dude in our truck four miles away from the actual space. Those are the two biggest, biggest misconceptions, that this citizen's arrest was somehow justified because there was rumors of somebody doing something wrong, as well as what I said previously. We just have to make sure that we're fighting that misinformation, and these very important cases have similar trajectories in, in, in more ways than one, even though in my view, one person that was chased defended themselves with a firearm, meaning Kyle Rittenhouse, and one person that was chased defended themselves and didn't have a firearm and unfortunately cost him his life. These cases are still worlds apart. And I don't wanna discredit either one of these cases or disrespect to any of the people that were killed in these cases, whether it was justified self-defense or not, somebody's still gone. So I want to give the just due that each case of each, the loved ones have, you know, that's still someone that they cared about. But I also want to make sure that we recognize that juries, your attorneys, how well your attorneys handle things, dealing with the actual facts, looking at what actually happened. The McMichaels lied, you know, said, oh, we told him stop. There's been video that contradicts that. Statement from someone, you know, that was there saying, you know, there's one less nigga or racial slur that they're gonna even determine if they're gonna allow the jury to listen to. All of these things are mixed up in this case. So it's not just the simple cut and dry of somebody was chasing somebody to defend life in this Ahmaud Arbery situation. It wasn't. The misinformation, again, that's rampant. Other cases, there's video footage that we can pull from. You've had people saying, oh, he had on boots as he was jogging and this, that. And as the information comes out, it's like, that's not what he had on. He had running shoes, literally. And I think the most important thing for us to understand is you don't just get to because you think something's going wrong. This, I'm going to chase somebody down with a firearm. 
as a Second Amendment advocate and activist, when that gun comes into play, we don't go chasing trouble with a firearm. You don't do it. And if you do, if life or property is harmed or lost, you're, you're responsible. May not be you premeditated to kill this specific person. It may just be murder too, involuntary Terry manslaughter. But the reality is you took your firearm, the Big Michaels took their firearm, before we get into the racial component of what racial slurs were said after Ahmaud Arbery was downed, the reality is you took a firearm and went to go chase a specific person, as you said, to effect a citizen's arrest when the owner of the building said nothing was stolen. Your assumption was incorrect and it unfortunately cost life. And I want people to understand that each case is different. That's why it's very important to know the facts of each case. And the fact of the matter is these guys jumped in their pickup truck and assumed that somebody stole something, they were wrong, and then assumed that he would just stop because they told him to, and he had no obligation to do so. Now, hypothetically, we ask certain questions. That doesn't change what actually happened. One of the big questions that we hear a lot, obviously via social media is, you know, well, if Ahmad Arbery would have had a firearm, so many people have said, you know, my white followers, my black followers, Asian followers, they'll say, damn, I wish Ahmad Arbery would have had a firearm like Kyle Rittenhouse did. Damn, I wish Ahmad Arbery would have been armed. And that leaves room, because that in and of itself is a hypothetical, but that leaves room for us to ask the question, damn, if he did, if he did have a firearm and defended himself, because I believe that when he took the gun, he actually was trying to defend himself. I don't think that's a smart tactic. If somebody got the drop on you with a firearm, you pretty much at the whims. But I believe that he was actually trying to defend himself, thinking he could wrestle the firearm. He was already running away. But nonetheless, if he would have had a firearm, and let's say he would have shot one or multiple, the both of the McMichaels or whoever, would the outcome have been the same? Would he have been exonerated? I think to me that would have tied into if he can prove that these men chased him when he was checking out a construction site and followed him and pulled firearms out. If he would have fired, had a firearm, which he should have, and I you know, meditate that more people do have firearms for these type of scenarios. Someone presents a firearm on me, and if I happen to get to my firearm and defend my life, because you are potentially using lethal force on me, I have reasonable belief to fear for my life when you present a firearm on me. So if Ahmaud Arbery would have done that, I think it would have been easy to prove, and I think he still would have been alive. I think it would have been all of the woke people, fake woke, blue checks, would have said, yeah, he defended his life. Yeah, he defended his life. They wouldn't have gave him the same grace if he was a different color. Again, we're speaking hypothetically. But I think it would have been intelligent. Random people chasing me, they had to drive their truck four minutes to catch him, which means you're a little far away. And you jumping out on me with firearms, I have every right to pull my firearm and defend life. Whether that's a smart tactical decision or not is a conversation for another day. But I think he would have been, he would have defended himself. I, I clearly can tell that the McMichaels don't really understand training because if they did, they wouldn't have taken a firearm to go chase somebody in the first place. So if they don't train, and let's say, since we're playing a hypothetical game, let's say Ahmaud Arbery would have had a firearm and he did train. And maybe he would have been able to put rounds on that threat before they took his life. I think it would have been easy for him to prove that and his family would still have him around. This is one of the core reasons why we tell every one of our classes at Black Guns Matter, not only to de-escalate and avoid conflict and resolve it if you already happen to be in it, if you can, but as an absolute last resort, that firearm is there to protect life. Simple cliches have wisdom. And the cliche that uh, best represents the thought process that I have here is I'd rather be judged by 12 
than carried by six. Chasing someone because you think that they did something with no proof or evidence without calling 911 to say, hey, they're at this location, that's vigilante. Being in a location, having the tools to defend yourself and being chased is self-defense if you have to use lethal force. No one is obligated if I show up and if I legitimately see a bad guy doing a bad thing, I see it with my own eyes. The McMichaels did not. They didn't. But if I see a bad guy doing a bad thing and I draw my firearm and say I want to stop that person to potentially hold them or in, if they're in the midst of, you know, attempting to take life with a firearm or any other tool, they are not obligated to listen to me at all. This notion that people that don't train and just buy a gun and they may have a gung-ho mentality, that's the wrong mentality. That's not a trained, responsible gun owner. That's somebody that says, I wish a motherfucker would, as opposed to fuck around and find out. I am not from the I wish a motherfucker would tribe at all. I'm from the I hope no one does tribe because I know what I'm going to do to you claim. The McMichael showcased a fundamental flaw in their ownership of a firearm. They thought that having a firearm and going to the danger or assumed danger, because they didn't think it was danger. They thought the danger happened because somebody stole something. The question that I would love to ask them is, if you knew that he was armed, would you have still went? I think you assumed that this person was not armed. You thought you had somebody that was going to bow down to doing what you told them to do, not only because of your privilege, arrogance, but also because I got the shotgun. And that's the wrong view to have as a firearm owner. These people were not, you know, stopping a rape. They didn't even know what happened. They thought that someone might have did a thing. And in, in essence, they put themselves in a scenario where they could be harmed. And unfortunately, they took a life in that process. So there's a difference between safe and responsible firearm owner. Um, and if, you're, if, you, if they were really interested in, in, in somebody might have stole something, and if they believe in calling the police, they should have called the police. That's the difference. And unfortunately, their series of unfortunate events and choices led again to the death of Ahmaud Arbery. We have a conservative, liber liberty-minded following. We we're trying to reach out with Black Guns Matter into more liberal areas to get them to understand the importance of self-defense, not the importance of putting yourself in harm's way. And so some of those followers that are conservatives that may own a firearm, they're FUDs. They own a gun. Well, I own guns. Owning a gun doesn't make you a trained, responsible gun. Training and being responsible does. So to some of the conservatives that are in our following that are actually trying to defend the McMichaels, you know, it tells me a lot about them. There's, there's, there's some more prominent or popular conservatives that actually think foolishly that the McMichaels should be acquitted. The McMichaels, you know, didn't lie. The McMichaels, the father, didn't have a relationship. You got to remember, this guy used to be the district attorney of that little county. It took over three months for this thing to get blown out of, to the proportion that it needs to be, not blown under proportion as it was. Two of those prosecutors recused themselves because they had relationships with McMichael Sr. This stinks to a whole bunch of different levels of police corruption, or at least we're not gonna look at that because of the good old boy network. And that wouldn't have had to be necessary if everything was on the up and up. So when these conservatives or so-called conservatives that are the strong back the blue statist mentality, they are showing that they don't really understand what the second amendment is about. They're showing their allegiance to the state and the police over their allegiance to justice. So that tells me that they don't really understand the thing that they say they're conserving. They're, they're supposed to be conserving the Constitution and human rights. A person's ability to live life 
get liberty, the pursuit of happiness and property. That's the American dream. They're saying because the McMichaels were under the assumption that this guy may have stole something that he deserved to die. Because he fought, which again is a tactical error in my view, because he fought there maybe wrestled a firearm from someone that somehow he called upon it himself. You know, people always say, oh, there's crabs in a barrel, you pulling each other down, crabs in a barrel. Crabs aren't supposed to be in a barrel. He wouldn't have had to make a, a bad tactical decision if the McMichaels weren't, didn't chase him for an assumption and point a firearm. They brandished at him. So when these conservatives, or so-called conservatives, say these things, it tells me A, they're ignorant, or B, they're on some step and fetch it shit, tap dancing to appeal to maybe different white conservatives or different types of so-called people that are bigoted. Some people, unfortunately, absolutely believe that Ahmaud Arbery deserved to die because he strolled through a construction site. So those people showcase their ignorance of the facts of the case or their bigotry is creeping. A lot of people try to hide their bigotry behind their so-called patriotism. And it just shows me what it is. So I don't really say much to those people. They're goofy. This Ahmaud Arbery case is important to our work at Black Guns Matter because we can go into hypotheticals, but the reality is Ahmaud Arbery had every right to have the means to defend his life. And there's a pretty good chance that if he did have the means to defend his, his life, he would be alive now. And I don't care about the race of an attacker. If someone rides down on me, put my life in danger, I want to have the means to defend my life and make it home to my family. That's the overall message that we're uh, stretching to everyone, especially urban America, black America, to make sure that the playing field is level. If you come across a scumbag in your community that wants to accost you, if you're a young woman, he wants to rape you. If you're a young man, she wants to rape you, I don't care. I don't care about your gender. I don't care about your sex. I don't care about your race. I care about you having the means to defend your life. And the Ahmaud Arbery case is a clear cut example of an opportunity for someone to have been uh, armed and they weren't. And now we have to deal with hypotheticals because the reality is the killers won. They murdered a man. And if that doesn't teach anybody anything, I don't really know what will.